Welcome to What Does a Function Do for people who are new to programming. Our class is starting to use functions, and if you are new to programming, functions are probably new to you, and the material may be confusing and you might feel pretty lost. So I'm hoping that this will be helpful for people who are new to programming. I'm going to be explaining some basic things about programming, uh, program, program concepts, the, the way that the program runs, and I'll have some terms that I will try to explain a little bit. Um, it's a lot to cover, so I'm doing my best. Here's what I'm going to cover. Some of what I'm going to cover in the video is the execution path of a program with, uh, that doesn't have any functions, no functions. Why do we make a function? The execution path in a program with one function or with more than one function. What is an argument and where does it go? and calling a function. So some of that may or may not make sense, but we'll, we'll get to it here. So let's start out with a program here in Code Sculptor. Um, it says, welcome to what is a function. There's some assignment statements, some print statements, an if-else statement, and some more print statements. As you can see, I'm trying to use simple statements so that you can stay with me, follow along, and see what's happening. Um, I want to ask, if I were to run this, what order do you think these things would happen in? You might say, well, it starts here at the top. It's going to print out, this is the top of the program, do these other print statements, do this if else, do this other printing, and then stop at the bottom. So let's run it, and you would be right. That's exactly what happens. And that might seem really simple and straightforward to you, and that's terrific that it does. But it's going to get a little more complicated when we start adding functions. So that's why I'm talking about it now. Um, why would we add a function? Well, usually it's because we want to do something more than once, and we want to put it in a, kind of in a container so we can just call on it when we want to do it. You might think of it like, um, um, I know how to go shopping. It's a function I do a lot. When I go there, I park the car, I go in, I take out my list, I find the items on my list, I put them in my cart, I go to the cashier, I pay the cashier, I take the stuff out to my car, put it in the trunk, and drive home. That's all kind of, I could call that all one big function I do, or I've got a method. Each time I go, I might have different items on my list. It might take longer if I have more items on my list. It might cost more. It could take up more room in the trunk, but it's the same basic function each time. And so I know how to do it, and I've got that down. So in our program here, I'm going to add a function. So there was a little pause there in the video, and I added this on line 12, define A plus B. And in that uh, definition, so this is, this is okay, here's our function definition, define the name of the function, and then the colon. colon. And then we say everything after the colon that's indented becomes the function. So that's the whole function. So our function a plus b has the if a plus b equals 47, then we do some stuff, else we do some other stuff. That's uh, the, the function a plus b. So now, I want to point something out. When I push the Run button, I'm going to come in here. The program is going to go directly down this list like it did before, but when it goes down this, this list of statements, reading from top to bottom, it's going to define this function. It's going to say, oh, okay, you want to define the function. Great, I'll remember that. I'll remember that you made a function called A plus B. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do any of the printing. I'm not going to try to decide if A is B. I'm just going to remember there's a function A plus B, and I'm going to remember what you said about it, but I won't do it. So if I run this program just as it is right now, it'll print this stuff here on 7 to 10. It'll remember this stuff. It'll define the function, and it'll print this stuff. But it will not ever do the stuff in this definition. So let's do it and see. Okay, there's the top of the program. We defined that. Then we did tray or envelope. This is the end. Okay, so the stuff here in this function call, this function definition, was never done. We didn't do it. If I wanted to actually do it, then I've got to have something that's called a function call, where I say the name of the function. I say A plus B with these parentheses. Then it says, this statement says, I want you to go find the function that I told you was called A plus B, and I want you to do everything in it. And then when you're done, come back to here, and it would start again right after line 28. If, you know, if there was something else on line 28, it might do that. But it's going to start right after that function call and go on. 
So let's clear this out here and do it. So now we've got, this is the top of the program, tray or envelope socks, mittens, coat. This is the end of the program. Then we get to this part here, which came from here. So it, in essence, what's happening is we come through here, we print the stuff, we remember this stuff, but don't do it. We print this stuff. Then when we get here, it's as though, the, if I could draw an arrow right from here to right here, we do that stuff, and then we jump back down to here. So there's this jumping around that happens when we have functions. That's important for you to know when you're looking at this program, that there's jumping around going on. The function call says jump, go do the function now. Jump, go do the function now. I'm back, and here's another version of the program. This time I've added another function definition, define print stuff colon, so that everything that's indented after that is the function um, definition. That's what's going to happen. But it's only going to happen when the function is called. It's not going to happen when we come to line 20, we're the program, we're going through here, we have push run, come down through this printing, come down through this definition, come down through this definition. The printing's going to print, this doesn't print anything, and this doesn't print anything. It's only when we get to here that it's going to jump first to A plus B, then it's going to jump to print stuff. In fact, let me just show you. We'll say, um, whoops, I'll go back to there. Um, so it will print this stuff at the top because I left that at the top. And I'm going to put something here. Whoops. Um, I want to get you to think about this business with jumping around because in most programs, down here at the bottom is where the program starts. And it's called the main line of the program. It's where everything starts from. Um, we could even comment these out up here because this is not real typical. Um, or typically we would start down here. And this would be the first statement that actually is going to go do something besides the assignments. It's going to, it's going to print this, and then we're going to call on this function. It's going to do all this stuff. When it gets to here, it's going to jump back right to here, go on to line 32, which says, go jump, go jump, go do this stuff. Then jump down to here, and then print by. Okay, so Basically, this stuff about functions, is, I'm trying to get you to get this idea of jumping around. Okay, so hopefully you can see how that happened. That we came down here, this is the start, jumped up to here, did all this stuff, jumped back to line 32, which said to jump over to here, whoops, it said to jump over to here, and then jump to line 33. So this jumping around is important, and this is something we've got to take into account all the time now. Okay, I've been trying to hurry my presentation along because I still need to talk about arguments. So arguments are not, it's not referring to when we have a conflict in this case. An argument is, um, it's like we've got a special box or an envelope or a tray or something like that. We want to send something to the program. We're going to call on the, on the, on to the, to the function. Bad, bad choice of words there. We want to send something to the function. We've got the function defined, but we want to send it some kind of a value that we'll, that we'll give to it. And if you just picture like a tray or an envelope, you can put something in it and send it along. So here, this call to the function print stuff says we're going to pass along this value of 47, and this is called an argument could be called some other things like a parameter, but whatever. We're going we're gonna to call it an argument because the teachers called it that. And it's going to go, again, pretend I can draw an arrow from 47 directly to x, just like straight as an arrow right here to x. When it comes in to this function print stuff, within this function, x will mean 47 because it's just as though there's an assignment statement right here. It says, Go, this says, go do print stuff and pass 47, assign 47 to x. In 
another way to say it would be do what's in print stuff and have x equal 47. That's what's going to happen. Now it could be something else. I could call it multiple times. I could have more than one argument. There's lots of ways to do it, but the main thing is to get the idea that there's a tray or an envelope that contains whatever we've passed in, but only while we're in this function. So when we come to line 22 and we say print tray or envelope containing x, x will be 47. And I could have a variable that I make up called send, and it could have some other value. And I could do it again and say this time, I'm going to call print stuff. I'm going to use the variable send, which is 55. That gets sent to x. Tray or envelope containing will print 55. And then I'm going to change it to something else, call it again. And again, it'll be whatever the value is now goes to x. So let's do that, see if that comes out the way we think it should. Okay, here's the top of the program. When we oh, I didn't comment it out of this case. Here's the top of the program. Define this function, define this function. Call a plus b, which prints this. Call print stuff with 47. The tray or envelope has 47. Call print stuff with send, which contains 55. The tray or envelope contains 55, which prints right here, print tray or envelope containing x. And x is whatever we sent in the tray or envelope. Okay, and now I've only got a couple minutes left to talk about return. You might have a return statement in your um, function, in which case the flow of control, say we're here, I, oh, by the way, I've changed this. I, 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 um, I hid the contents of print stuff and I took out all the calls to print stuff. So uh, right now we're just gonna be looking at A plus B, the function A plus B for this return statement stuff. And I added a return statement here and a return statement here. So this return statement stuff, um, again, I need circles and arrows to be able to show you what's happening. So when I get to here, I say print. Then I say call this function and do whatever's in this function. Right? And I have no argument this time. I'm just calling without any argument, but I could be sending something, but I'm not. And return is like a special envelope sending something back. So in this case, I've got a return statement here and a return statement here. Those, whichever return statement is done, depending on the condition for this if, that return statement is actually going to replace what I've highlighted. So if a plus b is equal to 47, the return will be a plus b, and that will print 47. Well, a plus b, as it turns out, here's a and b, it is 47. This will print, this will print, and this will return the value of a plus b, which is 47, and it will return it here, and this will actually print 47. So let's clear this. Okay, here's the printing at the beginning. Here's this print statement. These three things came out of this call right here. And then, I'm sorry, the, the first two came from the call up there and then the, the, the 47 actually came from this statement which says print what was returned by A plus B. Um, how can I say that another way? So A plus B was, re was replaced by that value right there. This statement right here, it's like saying print whatever is returned, which is that. Again, I need circles and arrows to try to make it clear. So we've learned that programs often execute from the bottom because before that we may have just a lot of definitions of functions but the execution path is going to often start from the bottom of the program where the main line is. And when we make a function, we define it, but then we have to call it in order to actually execute it. And I'm out of time, so thank you for listening.